Bobbity attacks. Searching for a way to resurrect Majin Buu, the wizard and his minions attack Earth following the Cell Games. In the midst of battle between Goku and Vegeta, the Saiyan Prince was consumed by a red symbiote, unleashing his carnage power. Meanwhile, Gohan faced Dabora, defeating him but not being strong enough to take on the new red symbiote. However, Bobbity realized the anger in Gohan's heart might be just what he needs to revive Majin Buu. Carnage Vegeta attacked ferociously while Yamcha sought out Mr. Satan. They needed him. They needed the power of the Venom symbiote. With Bulma's help, Venom was brought back to Mr. Satan, leading to an intense battle between Venom and Carnage. Though Mr. Satan did well, it was clear that it wasn't going to be enough. It was up to Goku to reunite with the Venom symbiote one more time in order to battle and defeat Vegeta. But as Vegeta was seemingly done for, the dark M on his forehead signified the control Bobbity had over him, awakening him once more. With Gohan giving in to Bobbity to finally stop the chaos, they realized that this was nothing but a ploy to finally gather enough energy to awaken the ancient evil known as Majin Buu. Having come back to his senses, Vegeta realizes his mistake, but maybe he can still fix things. Alongside Gohan, they seek to face Buu one last time, together. The pink cloud of smoke had revealed the ultimate being, Majin Buu. But before he had any chance to joke about, Gohan and Vegeta were already crashing against him, sending him flying far away. Bobbity was about to protest, but a spiky tendril pierced him. He was down for the count, just like that, Vegeta telling him that no one else would ever control him again. Buu stood back up, angry. Who were these people and why were they attacking him out of nowhere? It didn't matter, they'd both die instantly. Majin Gohan and Carnage clashed with Buu, shaking the entire earth in the process. It's one of the toughest battle any of them had ever had, but this Boo guy had both the raw power and the symbiote's capabilities. Gohan was eventually beaten down, and Vegeta couldn't keep up anymore. Boo kicked Gohan far away and elongated his arms towards Vegeta, but he did the same, both tendrils connecting, trying to grab each other, but something weird happened. The Carnage symbiote felt a connection with Boo. Without both of them even realizing it, they were starting to get closer and closer. The symbiote and Boo's own beings started to slowly merge. By the time Vegeta realized what was going on, it was too late. He screamed and tried to fight it, but eventually a mutual absorption engulfed both of them. Boo and Carnage were now one being. <laughs> Gohan didn't know what to think, he could barely stand up after the fight against Buu, but the power he was feeling, it was the very definition of lost hope. A mighty roar was heard across the entire planet, shaking it, collapsing buildings. Gohan desperately charged his energy and flew towards the creature, but in a single swipe of a tendril, he was down once again, unconscious. He was neither Vegeta nor Buu, he was Carnage. No. No, that's not right either. He was the maximum carnage. His tendrils began to expand all over the desert, reaching the city and piercing through buildings and structures. From the lookout, Goku yelled at the rest of the fighters to go help the civilians. It's the least they can do for now. Mr. Satan was going to jump to the rescue, but Shin and Kibito interrupted him, saying that they might have a chance to beat Buu, even in this situation. He had to train with the sea sword. But Mr. Satan refused. He had to secure his daughter's safety. Yamcha said that he'd go rescue her. He insisted that Mr. Satan had to go train and get stronger to defeat the abominations. Mr. Satan hesitated but agreed, pleading with Yamcha to secure his darling Videl. Shin, Kibito, and Mr. Satan disappeared. Goku was also interrupted by Bulma, whom he had taken to the lookout as well. She said that there was an alternate route to beat Carnage, aside from a weird sword. A few years ago, she took a Venom sample after their first encounter with it. She experimented with it, analyzed it, trying to figure out a way to use it without making the user lose consciousness or a way to kill it if it ever returned. Surprisingly, she found both. Goku told her to finish the story and tell him what's so important about this. They're running out of time. Bulma took out a white syringe. She said that now that Goku had recently reconnected with the symbiote, this might work even better. Piccolo and the rest of the warriors approached the desolate area where red goo and tendril-like veins covered various buildings, cars, and roads. Piccolo helped Gohan stand back up. He told him about the plan. Gohan was glad to catch a break. He was still too injured. Yamcha approached Gohan 
and asked them if he could escort him to Mr. Satan's house. They needed to ensure the safety of Adele. Both of them flew towards there, while Piccolo and the rest went to different areas of the planet as the symbiote expanded. They find little Videl, defiant. Who were they? What was that red goo? And where was her dad? Gohan presented himself, and he said that they were both there, sent by her dad to take her to safety. Videl pouts, but watching on the news about these weird creatures, she had no other choice but to accept. Gohan carried Videl to the lookout, followed by Yamcha. Once she was safe, all these warriors reunited. Even the androids tried to attack the tendrils in the city, but it was getting out of control. The buildings were getting infested with pink and red goo, and they couldn't track the swords because every single tendril had a key signature, but they stood back to back, ready for anything. Oh boy, looks like I'm up. No! Huh? Get away with this! <laughs> 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 Bulma tries to reason with Carnage. Part of Carnage even appears before Bulma, as she tries to reason with it. She hoped that her husband was still inside there one way or the other, but Carnage roared and attacked Bulma, several tendrils launching right at her as she closed her eyes, yet nothing happened. When she opened her eyes back up, she saw Goku wearing a white gi, holding onto the tendrils as they sizzled in his hand. Goku kicks Carnage, sending him far away. Goku looked at Bulma with a smile on his face. Flash, he leaped towards Carnage, as Bulma started to leave the scene, hoping that the prince would end up okay. Goku was burning maximum Carnage with his attacks, but the power difference was still very huge, so Goku turned into a Super Saiyan, but something was off. It seemed like whatever he was using mutated his Super Saiyan form. The battle was still very difficult, but Goku was slowly being regenerated and getting stronger thanks to his Saiyan anatomy. Maximum Carnage was getting angrier and more wild, and as he did so, Goku started to exploit his regeneration by trying to push his Super Saiyan form to the next level, without any fear of drawbacks. Goku became even stronger with his hair being spikier, mutating once more, but it wasn't enough. Goku knew he had to go even further. He pushed off Carnage and started to charge his ki as much as possible, resulting in an explosion that burned Carnage. When the dust settled, Goku revealed his full power, his berserker state, his anti-venom power. Both of them clashed again, with Goku still being a little behind, but stronger and stronger with every attack. When their fight started to break the planet apart, Goku launched a ferocious roundhouse kick to maximum carnage, and fired a ton of key blast at the tendrils, freeing the city slowly. However, Goku was aware that the Earth was still in danger because of the battle. Goku scans for any nearby remote planets until he finds a key presence that feels a little familiar. There was no time to think. Goku grabbed onto what used to be Vegeta, and with his fingers on his forehead, he teleported to the moon. Two men with bunny ears and an old rabbit with a frilly dress scream at what they see, running off into a hole inside. Goku and Carnage resume their battle on the moon, their onslaught of attacks creating shockwaves that crack the celestial body. Both of them were regenerating and getting stronger as they fought. Goku wasn't just strong, but the anti-venom formula caused his attacks to burn Carnage with every touch, slowly destroying the rogue symbiote. Yet Carnage was still very strong in his own right, and anti-venom didn't work well on Boo's properties. Both feral beasts roared at each other. Goku started to feel another far off key signature, with gigantic levels. King Kai contacted Goku, telling him to go to that key source, in the Supreme Kai's world. An ally was waiting there now. Goku thanks King Kai, as the god wishes him luck. Goku teleports himself and Carnage once again, this time to the Kaioshin realm, and as they did, an unknown force attacked Carnage. Goku was astonished, as Venom revealed himself stronger than ever before. Hercule mentioned how when he was practicing with the sword, a weird old guy came out of it, and when he was told about the situation, he offered to unleash his potential. It was a long process, with Goku not realizing just for how long he had been fighting, but after sensing how Earth was being destroyed, he called it quits early. 
die. Still, his strength was gigantic. It seemed that the symbiote had the mixed potential of every being it had bonded with, the Namekian warriors of old, Goku, and Cell. So even if he dropped out of the ritual early, the reward was still amazing. Goku was shocked and amazed, but told him that eventually Carnage would be able to get stronger and kill both of them. He had an idea, but he needed Mr. Satan to make some time for it. Mr. Satan accepted the challenge, and the symbiote wrapped around his face once again, attacking Carnage, declaring themselves as the champions of the universe. Goku rises up to the top, creating a white spirit bomb. But even as the fight goes on, he isn't able to gather enough energy from the Earthlings, so Mr. Satan begs for the people of Earth to help him against another great evil, a dark creature that was destroying their cities and beloved homes. This actually started to work, and all of humanity gave energy to Goku. Venom gave Carnage a spinning kick towards the ground and trapped him in a web made of tendrils. Without wasting any time, he flew alongside Goku as the Saiyan launched the Genkidama. Carnage broke free of his captivity, but he was struck by the giant's fear. Despite everything, he was still resisting it. Even though it was incinerating every piece of his body, he wouldn't give up. Venom knew he needed to help, launching upwards and firing another beam just above the spirit bomb, putting even more pressure on it. Carnage was roaring and screaming. He was quickly losing energy and ground. There was no time to escape. Goku and Mr. Satan roared as the spirit bomb exploded, leaving sparkles behind. They have finally won. As they fall to the ground, they saw a sight that relieved them. Vegeta was still there, unconscious, but free. Something confused them both. Majin Buu was there too. How did he survive? But then, both of them calmed down. They couldn't really sense any evil inside of him. They should keep an eye on him. The Dragon Balls from New Namek were used to revive everyone killed by Carnage, since the Earth's Dragon Balls were used after the Cell Games to bring back the people the androids had killed. Along with that wish, Gohan regrew his arm with another wish from the Dragon Balls. Morbius and Bulma wonder out loud about studying Gohan and the effects. Gohan is interested in studying the symbiotes with Miss Bulma and Morbius. Mr. Satan promises Venom that he won't lose him ever again. Venom is eager to stay with him and protect the world together. After these dramatic events, Mr. Satan was welcomed to join the Z Fighters, officially becoming part of the team alongside Venom. He even introduced the symbiote to Little Videl, finally. He was curious about it more than fearful. She really was brave. There were still some tendrils around, and the human Z Fighters and Piccolo were the ones to take care of them, to make sure that no one ever got taken over by that being again. Vegeta was very regretful over everything that had happened. He only really wanted to defeat Kakarot. The warriors didn't know what to think after all the chaos, but Bulma was just happy to have her husband back. Maybe with the passing time, the rest of the warriors would see how Vegeta was just a victim of the symbiote, just like Goku was one before. Surprisingly, Goku got used to the anti-venom symbiote. He's amazed by its skills, the tendrils, and the regeneration. Even even though he didn't like it at first. Although he did think that the symbiote could be helpful in future altercations, he was never really a fan that he had to use somebody else's help to get that power. Once he learned from Bulma that the symbiote wasn't sentient and was merely an extension of his own body, Goku made up his mind. He'd keep the anti-venom symbiote and train with it. He was excited to discover what he was capable of now. Soon enough, Goku and Gohan visited Mr. Satan at his home, and Venom welcomed him. While Gohan and Videl played with each other, Mr. Satan and Goku talk amongst themselves about everything that's happened happened recently. As he hears more stories about Goku's battles against Carnage and his various adventures through his life, Mr. Satan feels rather inadequate. Goku was a hero through and through, yet he was just a regular guy that happened to find Venom by accident. He thinks to himself that maybe Goku should have been the one to stay bonded with him, but Goku disagrees. When he got Venom back, he saw all the memories he developed, the bond they had, the friendship they created. The thing that Mr. Satan and Venom had was really something else, something unique. Deep down, he realized they were a perfect match. You were the one to save Venom, Mr. Satan, not me. You were able to resist him when I couldn't. Your heart is stronger than any I've ever seen. And the way you convinced all those people, the way they all believed in you from the bottom of their hearts, you really are the world's greatest hero. Venom pops out of Hercule, letting him know that Goku is right. He doesn't want to be with anyone else but him. As Venom and the rest laugh, their laughter fills the air as the moon glistens in the sky.
Thanks for watching everyone, I hope you enjoyed that new video, huge thank you to Professor Chimp and Rogmane who worked very hard on this series, I'm very excited to see what's coming up next, I couldn't do it without them. I know this one took a long time to come out, but the next few will come out faster, with longer videos up until the finale with a full story. So I hope you'll join me. If you haven't checked it out, I did an analysis of the brand new trailer for Dragon Ball Daima, it'll be linked in the description below, so be sure to check it out. As always, a thank you to the patrons of the channel. The Shadows, Anders Wallen, NSMan1, Chandler Draws Things, Tusky59, Indigo Saturn64, Earth Dragon, Gerald Smith, Jake King, Softer Cat, Arvin Selman, Faffing About, Kitsune Jester, Kaiju Monarch, Shadow Paradox, Eric Jenkins, Evan Stewart, Lost Saiyan 997, Orange Crimsicle, Chris Macareno, Maulik, Daddy, Cyber Samurai, Ryan Wilpoa, BC Man 420, Faisal Alsheref, D Man for Life, Blaze 9526, Christ, PlayStation CK, Free Flow Highway, Jamie Pollard, Mystic Angel, Shane K, True Lightning Striker, Ghost 1571, Trentrals, D Man Place 22, Jim G, Drum Foster, Salil Salil Paranjape, Keith Grimes, Dreadpool, and Samuel Randall. Thank you guys for joining me in this video. Don't forget to share with friends who like Dragon Ball. And until we meet again, see ya!